such great moments and nights and days and morning and evening, if in these moments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives us the tawfiq to do such an amal, such an action, that compared to that action, in terms of reward that Allah Ta'ala has kept for that action, there is no other action that can compare. There is no other action that can compare. So quickly is that action accepted. Allah Ta'ala very quickly gives the reward for that action. And reward, Allah Ta'ala states, Allah mentions that when my servant remembers me, does my dhikr, then I also do his dhikr. I remember him. Subhanallah. Now the mashaykh, the pious elders have said that after getting this reward, what other reward do we need to attain? Is there any other reward after this reward? The Allah Ta'ala, our Rabb says, I remember you. And then after this reward, is there any need for any other reward? Do we need to attain any more rewards? To remember Allah says, when you remember me, I remember you. The universe remembers you. Rahma descends to you. The, the birds remember you. The animals remember you. They praise you. The fish praise you. The leaves praise you. The winds praise you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you also. Subhanallah. And according to their status, now how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember the human being, the dhakir who's remembering Allah? Allah ta'ala says, I give my favor special to that human being. Allah says, I remember you in such a way that I've forgiven you. I've forgiven you. فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِ وَلَا تَكْرُونِ In the Qur'an Hakim, wherever Allah ta'ala has ordered us to remember him, to do his dhikr, alongside that Allah ta'ala has used the word kathira. Abundance, quantity, that do my dhikr in abundance, in high quantity. Remember me, but how? In high quantity. Now, there's a condition so that Allah Ta'ala has attached to His remembrance here. Allah Ta'ala has attached a condition that don't just remember me, rather how should you remember me? In abundance, kathiran kathira. Subhanallah. Allah's mercy, that Allah Ta'ala says that if you're not going to eat the halwa, you have to finish and eat all of the halwa that's on the plate. You know these gulab jamun, these sweets, you're not going to eat two or three, you have to empty the plate, then leave this. These ras gullas, you have to eat all of them. Allah says, no, not a little bit of dhikr, rather abundance of dhikr. Abundance of dhikr, subhanallah. Beautiful. Allah has given da'wah, invitation. Allah has put, giving us His favor, His karam, and then letting us do His dhikr. And on top of that, Allah says, no, 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 in abundance you have to remember. That... It doesn't stop. Subhanallah. Say subhanallah. That when does it stop? At the time of death. Aha, Allahu Akbar. So this is one point. This is one angle you could think. Allah Ta'ala says, Kathir, abundance. Remember me in high quantity. Do dhikr in that way that it never stops. Since you were born until you pass away, what should you do? My dhikr, continuous. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala, how do I do this? How do I remember you? Um, that if I don't pass away until I don't pass away, I remember you from the time of birth till, I, till the time I pass away. Yes, Allah says, this is kathir. Kathir. And don't stop. And don't stop for a second. That dhikr shouldn't stop for a second. And that's when you can be in teachings. If a person doesn't attain these two principles or follow these two principles, then he cannot be successful in the naqshbandi teachings of doing dhikr. Number one, principle number one, is wuqufi qalbi. What is it? What's this one? The meaning of uqufi qalbi is that every moment the heart, every moment the heart, a person is focusing towards his heart, then my heart is saying, Allah, 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 Allah. And if we don't get to this position, a salik doesn't reach this position, then he's not successful. He's not successful. To get to this these are the terms of the next one, these Print that your heart, that you watch your heart, you guard your heart, you protect your heart, that no thought other than Allah should come into my heart, because only one thing can come. Either it will be a thought away from Allah, or it will be the dhikr of Allah. Subhanallah. There cannot be anything else. So all day long, all day long, the salik, the student, should not think of other things other than Allah. In, in the heart should be just the thought of Allah. That's it. That's it. In the heart should be the thought of Allah. That's it. That's all we have to do. 
That's sort of the two principles. So focus on the heart, always concentrate on the heart, and don't allow any other thoughts to come into the heart. And when we do this, then we are doing dhikr kathira, and nothing will prevent us, restrict us. And after doing dhikr, if thoughts come into your mind about dunya, this and that, thousands of thoughts, then consider this is not dhikr I'm doing, uqoo fiqalbi is gone. And I'm not a salik, correct, I'm not a right, uh, correct murid student. Time I'm wasting in thinking about dunya, I've wasted my time. Astaghfirullah, what have I done? Oh, I should concentrate on my heart. I should concentrate on my heart. So straight away then, turn towards the heart. Thoughts and evil whispers of shaitan will then disappear. And the third thing, which is a beautiful impact or result, is that insan, the human being, due to the father of Allah, he leaves the sins. Leaves the sins. And from which sins? Imagine. Imagine, not from the tongue, from the hands, but the heart, the sins of the heart, the sins that emanate from the heart, the human being, he is then free from those sins. The real effective sins you could say. So because he is concerned.